Hello world! In today's video, I am going to highlight some of the common problems that you may encounter while using UART in your project. I have also provided solutions, thus you wouldn't have to spend hours and hours troubleshooting or debugging these issues. Let's look at the first problem. We usually connect VCC pin to VCC ground to ground, clock to clock, MOSI pin to MOSI pin, so on and so forth. So you may feel like connecting TX of your UART to TX and RX to RX. As a beginner, I have spent quite a few minutes to rectify this one. Please don't make the same mistake. If one device speaks, the other is supposed to listen. Thus, TX of one is connected to RX of the other. Think of TX as voice and RX as ear. Now, if you aren't getting any output, then the first thing that you must do is check if the connections are made right. Moving on. If the connections seem all right and there is still some problem with the output, then check if you've configured both the devices properly. Now, what do I mean by that? So I hope you've seen the previous video on this channel wherein I've explained the UART protocol in depth. If not, check the link in the description below. In that video, I have clearly explained that data bits, parity bit, stop bits, and endianness can be set as per our needs. You can use anything between five to nine data bits. Parity bit is optional, so you can opt for it if you want to perform error check. You can use either one, 1 1.5, or two stop bits. Endianness can be configured as LSB first or MSB first. Usually by default, it is LSB first. If the transmitter is transmitting four bits in a second, then how will the receiver know whether they are two bits or four bits or any other random number. Remember, we are talking about asynchronous communication, which means we don't have a clock signal. So how will the receiver decipher the duration of one bit? In asynchronous communication, the transmitter and receiver must talk to each other at the same rate. And that rate is nothing but baud rate. So if the transmitter transmits four bits in a second, the receiver will interpret it as 4 bits only if it is listening at the same rate. Now, not all baud rates are supported by all the devices, so you should check the user guide of your devices for a list of available baud rates that are supported and configure the same rate on both the sides, that is on the transmitter and receiver end. Now, this is very important because any mismatch in baud rate results in no data or misinterpretation of data. So occasionally you may see some garbage values as well. So to conclude, the settings should be identical on both the sides. Now, sometimes you won't get any output due to a faulty UART device. With the help of a loopback test, you can check the status of your device. It is a simple method. For this, you have to connect the TX and RX pins together. Many microcontrollers have an inbuilt loopback mode. You just have to add a few lines of code in your program to enable this mode. In case of loopback mode, an internal connection is made between the transmitter and receiver ends. In either case, TX is connected to RX. Thus, a loop is created between transmitter and receiver. So if you transmit hello, then you would receive the same data on the other side. In other words, if input data gets echoed on your terminal program, then it simply indicates that your UART device is working correctly. Now, to connect your microcontroller to your PC, you can use a USB to UART converter and you can use any terminal program like Terraterm, PuTTY, Hyperterminal, etc. to open the connection with your microcontroller. Now we're almost done, but there's just one more thing that we need to discuss. In TTL standard, high voltage represents logic 1 and low voltage represents logic 0. And the reverse is true in case of RS-232. The good news is most of the microcontrollers and other modern day devices use TTL. So you won't have to bother about these standards and conversions. But let's say if you want to use an old printer, which is based on RS-232 with your TTL based microcontroller, then remember that you cannot interface both these devices directly. But you can include a small chip like a MAX-232 to convert RS-232 signals to TTL and vice versa. And yeah, that's it. Then you can use your printer. 
So I hope that this wee bit of extra knowledge will help you in using UART successfully in your project. If you want to know more about UART in MSP430, then I have created a video on the same topic. Check the link in the description. Like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye world.